Good morning, everybody. I'm Mr. Ferris alongside of Jaden. Today we are going to explain toys. Not just any toys, some of the most dangerous ones. More on them after news and announcements. On Saturday, famous vampire novelist Anne Rice dies at the age of 80 in the hospital due to the complications of a stroke. She wrote over 30 novels, but is best known for her work, The Vampire Chronicles, which created iconic figures like the vampire Lestat. Her novel interview with the vampire was made into a movie which starred Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. Likewise, her writing influenced other writers who have went on to create other stories like the Twilight series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Vampire Academy, True Blood, and Vampire Diaries. Finally, her influence in the LGBTQ community was inspirational for many and she will be missed. In other news, more than a dozen New York counties are refusing to enforce state mask mandates. In addition to Saratoga County, Madison, Rockland, Livingston, and Niagara have also said they might not enforce this new policy. On Monday, an indoor mask mandate went into effect. The county also said they will not enforce a policy that prohibits children at school from taking mass breaks. Theodore T. Kusiner, junior, chairman, junior Chairman of the Saratoga County Board of Supervisors said in a statement, their public health department and law enforcement agencies will not enforce New York State's misguided and unrealistic mass mandate, mask mandate, which passes the buck to counties to enforce what the governor herself said just over a week ago is almost impossible to enforce. Aspire Dance CNY puts on their first annual production of the Nutcracker this, sat this Saturday at FM High School Auditorium. There are two performances, a matinee at 1 and an evening performance at 5. The show is friendly and entertaining for all ages, and for those who cannot come see it live, there is a live stream video available for purchase as well. Tickets are available to purchase through AspireDanceCNY.com. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Candy canes will be sold every morning, 8.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. To 9 a.m. To 9 a.m. <laughs> During lunches, days 2 and 4. Students can write a message to send the recipient with the candy cane buyers must know part of recipient schedule so that Key Club can drop them off. They are $1 each or two for $150. The food drive competition uh, with Central Square is heating up. We need to get more items than Central Square so that Mr. Avellino doesn't get a pie in his face. But don't forget, if we can get to 2,000 items or dollars by Friday the 17th, we will shave Mr. Avellino's head. Help if you can. Food items, cash, or online payment for donations are all appreciated. Mr. Avellino have approved the following days for Student Council's Holiday Spirit Week. Monday what? is Festive Holiday, Hat Mask Day, Tuesday is Giving Tuesday. Bring in a canned food for the food drive and you can wear your PJs. Wednesday is Ugly Sweater Day. Thursday, Candy Cane Colors Day. Yes, there will be a Key Club meeting at 3.30 today uh, in C4. Bring a friend. New members are welcome. And seniors want to hear more about what college is really, really like. Attend the ESM Alumni Connection event on December 23rd during third block in the auditorium to hear from former ESM students in order to attend. Sign up. December 21st with the Google form that was sent to your school. We've got one more slide. This shows the students and what uh, colleges they are representing. Oh, that's a little small. You know what? I'll get that out next or tomorrow in larger font so you guys can all read it. So, oh wait. Yeah, I'll go. So there are some toys that are very dangerous. So yeah, dangerous toys. No. Uh, what, what dangerous toys? Um, okay. I'm you. not talking about that dangerous toys, whatever they, oh, the, whatever they are. Yeah. All right, so back to our real topic. First example, the Cabbage Patch Kids Snack Time Kid. This doll from the 1990s came with plastic snacks to which the doll munched when the food was set it, uh, in it op its open lips. Once set, the food moved through the mouth on metal rollers and ex and excited into and excited into its backpack on the doll's back. Unfortunately, the doll was a dangerous toy. There were incidents where the dolls ate people's hair. One example was when their uh, three-year-old Carly Mize had her hair caught in one of those dolls and was left partly bald when her hair was snagged by her doll and pulled out some of her hair from her scalp. 
Another example were those insect makers called creepy crawlers. They're squirmy and wormy and purple and green. The grossest little creatures that you've ever seen. Creepy crawlers. Fill the monster mold with the colored plastic goop and make a creepy crawler from my yucky monster soup. They're ucky, yucky, squirmy, wormy, very scary, sometimes hairy, squiggly, wiggly, creepy crawling. Creepy crawlers. Gross out your sister. Embarrass your dad. You can be Creeper crawlers were a series of machines that he made all sorts of insects with. However, there were some areas that got extremely hot, and if you touched the area, it can cause serious burns. The burns would be bad enough, um, but the chemical gel called Plastigoo, which was used for the original crawlers, also gave off toxic fumes. A revival in the 1978 with a new safer formulas in plastic molds and no metal molds would be a success, but it didn't do as well either because kids crave danger, I guess. Scary enough, but there is more to come after the weather. Today, we're going to have a high of 64 and a low of 40 degrees. In the morning, there's not much happening in the sky, but we're gonna get some wind. And as we progress into the afternoon, we're gonna get some rain showers here and there. And as we head into overnight times, we'll get more rain and it'll be more windy. Tomorrow is gonna be sunny with a high of, sorry, yeah, tomorrow is gonna be high of 48 and it's gonna be sunny and cloudy and it's gonna be a low of 34 degrees. So it's not gonna be as warm out as today and it's gonna start getting a bit colder. Saturday is going to follow that trend and instead of going to be sunny, it's going to be cloudy all day with a high of 38 and a low of 28 degrees. So now we're getting into that colder December weather, hopefully. And with that, I'm Grayson with your Thursday morning weather. The next toy was lawn darts. Basically a game of darts, but you play on your lawn. To play, you need different sized hoops to make a target on the ground. Don't have hoops? You can also use rope, building blocks, pool noodles, or rocks instead. After the target is set, you have to make a throwing line several yards away from the target. No player is allowed to pass the line. Once that is set up, now you can play. The rules were simple. The aim of the game is to get more points than your opponent. If a dart reaches the target zone, then the player is awarded two points. Well, those points are also canceled out if other players also get their darts in the target zone, much like regular darts. I mean, if a player gets their dart in the target zone and player B gets their dart into the target zone, then neither player A or B will get any points since they cancel each other out. If neither player's darts ends up in the target zone, then one point will be awarded to the player whose piece landed closest to the target. The players need to decide before the beginning of the game how many rounds will be played. And at the end of the game, the winner is the player with the most points. Unfortunately, these toys are pretty dangerous. Because of the sharp tips they had, they caused serious injuries. Several lives were killed as well. For example, a girl named Michelle Snow got hit by these darts, causing brain trauma. And it's not just her. There were others that were injured, injured that went to the ER as well. Yep. One time, an 11-year-old girl was hit by these, and she fell into a cone because of these. The product was then for adults only, but didn't work, and eventually the toy was banned. Today, the now they nowadays look like a ball at the tip of a dart. Not much fun, but much safer. Another dangerous toy was something called the Hop Rod. Apparently, a gasoline-powered pogo stick. The Big Stick is here. It's the Hop Rod the world's first powerized pogo stick. That's right, a newly designed gasoline engine powers the hop rod and fires you back up every time you come down. Ruggedly built, the hop rod is made to last. Now even mom and pop can hop. And with the hop rod, you get a different ride every time. The hop rod, by chance. Hey. Yeah, pretty dangerous there. It was a fun little sport, lawn darts and the hot rod. Let's go on to our sports and see what's going on in the NFL and locally. The Kansas City Chiefs play the Los Angeles Chargers tonight at 8.20. The wrestling team lost to JD yesterday. Peyton Spencer, Dylan Johnson, and Max Wunderlich all had wins in their matches. 
In upcoming games, girls basketball plays against Salve at 6.45, and I'm Ellie with your sports. So I gotta tell you, Jaden, of those, I definitely had lawn darts. I have to also admit I had a cabbage patch kid, but nothing that ate anything. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed our dangerous toys. Be on the lookout because the holidays will definitely have some toys around, so be careful. So that's it for today. So for me, Mr. Ferris, and everyone on the morning show, have a painless day. Always a good, that's always good to have a painless day.